Good morning to everyone. Uh, it is a pleasure to be with you today to talk about the Augustinian Recollects, how they were saved by the Philippines, specifically the missions in the Philippines. I will first discuss the historical precedents and reasons for such decrees that confiscated almost all the properties, 99.9% .9 of the properties of the Augustinian Recollects in Spain, kicking out almost all the Augustinian Recollect priests and brothers into the streets. The person we have to mention with respect to this, what the Spaniards called desamortization, or I translate as despoliation, church confiscation de decrees, and expropriations. These decrees started in 1834 and lasted until 1837. But the most important decree was the one issued by the anti-clerical liberal regime on July 25, 1835. I will narrate here the catastrophic effects on the religious congregations and orders. First, those of the male religious and shortly after the female religious. The anti-clerical government of Prime Minister Juan Alvarez Mendizabal effected all these confiscations, expros expropriations, despoliations, and the consequent exclaustration of the religious. Imagine 32 of the 33 convents of the Agustinian Recollects in Spain were abolished in the span of three years. But the most uh, serious was the decree of July 25, 1835. All the Recollect nuns, brothers, and priests were kicked out into the streets by this anti-clerical regime. But first we have to discuss how all these came about. And then we also discuss the effects and consequences of these decrees on the Philippine missions and elsewhere. This paper, I'm going to read, is quite short, 15 pages long, based on the book of Father Angel Martinez Cuesta, the second volume of Historia de los Agustinos Recoletos, which came out on in 2015. And of course, this short booklet This is the updated version of the 1988 uh, edition titled La Orden de los de Agustinos Recoletos Evolución Carismática, also by Father Angel Martinez Cuesta. Uh, this is a very good uh, read for everyone who cares for the Agustinian Recollects, especially from 1988 to year 2000, updated book. This one should have a copy, and the province should publish an English edition as soon as possible. Then we discussed the three convents that were exempted from 
the suppression, abolition, confiscation decrees of this anti-clerical, anti-religious liberal regime of the Maria Cristina Queen Regent of Spain because Isabel II was still four years old, so they had a Queen Regent. I refer to the convents of the Dominicans, Order of Preachers, Ordo Pecato Predicatorum in Ocania, Toledo, the very old convent of the Augustinians in Valladolid City along Paseo de Filipinos. Strange, when the 1835 decree was enacted, the convent of the Augustinian Recollects in Valladolid also, and another one in Portillo, were abolished, but this one of which belongs to the Augustinians, was saved because for the simple reason that they, Augustinians, produced missionaries for the Philippines and Asia. Our, we'll discuss the special case also of the 32 convents abolished by the anti-clerical regime of Prime Minister Juan Alvarez Mendizabal, only Montiagudo, out of 33, only Montiagudo, not the Montiagudo of Father Cabarles in San Carlos, but the Montiagudo of Navarra, which was purchased in 1828. We provide a historical background of this Marian Convent, which served which serve as the formation house, was as Father Kilatan had, Father Emil had said, the novitiate of the missionary province of St. Nicholas of Tolentino, which celebrates this year the 400 years of existence. Montiagudo, founded in 1828, was, as we have said and repeated, the novitiate and later the philosophical and theological formation house undertaken by those future missionaries of the congregation who work in the Philippines. Thus, the order continued to survive in our country by training in the only existing convent in Spain. All the other convents were demolished, were destroyed, were sold, were auctioned off, and the rich people bought them. Marcilia came into the picture in 1865. The Theology House of Marcilia, now vacant in Navarra. And then, as Father Emil said, in 1878, the convent of San Milian de la Cogolia in La Rioja. Bear in mind that these two convents in Marcilia and San Milian de la Cogolia were formerly owned by Camaldolese or Cistercians who were exclustrated, meaning the their the orders were abolished, they were the convents were suppressed, and all the uh, contemplative brothers and priests of these orders were kicked out into the streets, and of course, as I uh, I should have said in the beginning. No hay mal que por bien no venga. There's always a cloud, and there's always a silver lining behind every cloud. As a prelude to this uh, talk, I would like to quote Father Angel Martinez Cuesta in this book. Between September 1935 and January of 1936, the Spanish government confiscated demolished or sold in, in auction 32 of the 33 convents owned by the Congregation of the Gustinian Recollects in Spain expelled the friars. Some of them were incarnated to the dioceses 
Others work as parochial vicars or even canons. Strangely, only 12 exclustrated Augustinian recollects were able to give a new meaning to their priestly and religious vocation without abandoning the order by enlisting themselves for the missions in the Philippines. Now let's have a background of the political and historical milieu and the main characters. We have the king of Spain, Ferdinand VII, and the queen of uh, consort, Maria Cristina. The king Ferdinand said the seven had two children. Unfortunately, they were daughters, they were females. And according to this sailing law, the, there can be no female heir to the throne. So what Ferdinand the seventh did was to enact the pragmatic sanction and allowed the female succession to her throne, who was at that time Infante Isabel, Princess of Asturias. And because she was still young, four years old at that time, the mother, Maria Cristina de Bourbon e dos Sicilias had to act as queen regent. The king's brother we have there in the picture, Infante Don Carlos Maria Isidro de Bourbon, naturally rose up in arms because it was not legal, according to him and his followers, the Carlis, that a woman should ascend to the throne. They had a battle cry, God, country, and king. And they rose up against the liberals and the Republican supporters of the Spanish government called Cristinos after Maria Cristina, the queen regent, or later on, Isabelinos after Queen Isabel II. This background is very important because these uh, wars we call the Carlist Wars almost bankrupted, placed the entire Spanish government in bankruptcy. There were three Carlist Wars. The first was a war of succession, a civil war from 1832 to 1940, seven years between those supporters of Carlos Maria de Bourbon and the supporters of Maria Cristina, the Queen Regent of the young Isabella II. Don Carlos Maria de Bourbon took the oath as king in Prisio, La Rioja, uh, La Rio is the province of uh, in northern Spain, no, near Navarra, Victoria. And that started the first Carlist Wars. 23 pitch battles were waged and won mostly by the liberals. This was to settle once and for all who should be the king or the monarch of Spain. They were most, the battles were mostly fought in Basque region in Catalonia and in the southern Spain, Andalusia. Nationalities or soldiers of various nationalities like Germany, Portugal, Britain, Belgium, and Italy join both the Carlist and liberal causes, depende. Kung sinong gusto nilang sa mga kampihan. The fratricidal war ended in 1840 
200,000 Carlist and liberal troops perished and the state of the economy was in shambles. Peace came on uh, with the Treaty of Bergara and Gipuzkoa between the Isabelian General Baldomero Espartero and the Carlist General Rafael Maroto. So as I've said, 200,000 Spaniards and other supporters from European countries perished in this civil war as well as the economy. After this, so imagine no money. The problem of the government now was to look for money. Where do we get the money to, to fund the war, the Carlist War, seven-year war? And where do we get the soldiers? I will answer that immediately. The church and religious orders initially respected Ferdinand VII, the king of Spain, and as well as the regime of Queen Maria Cristina, the widow, in order to obey the call to peace and harmony. But when the anti-clerical liberal regime took over, the church favored more the Carlist War. Eventually, Pope Gregory XVI did not recognize the rights of, the, of Isabel II, or in English, Elizabeth II. The policies of the church were deemed reason enough to justify the closure of the convents and monasteries, destroyed or abandoned. In March 1834, the first decree of desamortization or exclustration and expropriation and despoliation or confiscation uh, was effected. It said, those monasteries where the, where the friars had escaped to the Carlist cause would be abolished. Later on, all the novices of these monasteries, more than 1,000, were to undergo military training, and no novices, new novices were admitted. On that same day, March, uh, April 22, the Royal Ecclesiastical Junta, patterned after the policies of the ancient regime, all the old regime, was set up to work for the systematic reform of the secular and regular clergy, the diocesan and the religious clergy. It consisted of four members of the Royal Council and ten bishops loyal to the Isabelian court, who were not, by the way, in good graces with the Catholic Church in Rome. The papal nuncios in Madrid deemed the junta schismatic and did not recognize it. The ecclesiastical junta was aimed to restore the former glory of the Spanish Church. Because of this uh, anti-clerical atmosphere, there were political disturbances, especially in, August, uh, in July 7, on July 17, 1834. In Madrid, 15 Jesuits, 8 Mercedarians, and 45 Franciscans were killed. You must bear in mind that the Jesuits were already rehabilitated. They were abolished in 1649, then and expelled from the Philippines in 1678, and they were restored in uh, 1814. They were abolished by the Pope in 1773, but Pius VII, the Pope who came from France, meaning who was uh, released from the captivity in France, restored the Jesuits in 1814. So there were already Jesuits. When the massacre took place in 1830, 
1834, July, the first decree was released in March 1834, expelling all those uh, friars who had fled the conventual walls. And then 1834, yeah, we have said that uh, friars and Jesuits, by the way, the Jesuits refuse to be called friars. Why? You ask them. Uh, what were the motives or pretext or alibi to kill the friars in Madrid? 78, according to the uh, latest count of one historian, 73, according to Father Cuesta. Anyway, there was a cholera epidemic in Madrid that killed, in July alone, 3,564. And there were rumors, gossip, that the cause of the death of uh, the cholera epidemics was the poisoned water resources in Madrid. And who poisoned them? The friars. So there was political dis disturbance and tumult, and the convents were burned down. The friars killed in Zaragoza. The following year, eight religious were murdered. Five convents were set ablaze. And in Barcelona, the convents of the Franciscans and the Carmelites were set on fire and uh, how many were killed? 21 religious perished in Barcelona. Five convents and 16 religious were further slain. The total casualties, 120 friars. By the anti-clerical mob and the government did not stop them. This was the cause of the later the expropriation and confiscation and despoliation of the religious congregations in Spain, the anti-clerical atmosphere. One of the convents burned down was the Recole convent in Madrid. Uh, it's not, not actually burned down. It, it was confiscated by the government. And on that same spot rose the future Biblioteca Nacional de España, which uh, every historian should have visited. No? If you want to see, uh, I was there one time in 1997, and I saw very old issues of El Imperial, El Netosiero, and other news, I even read the news of Father Mariano Bernad, who was a headline in a news in Cebu that he was, that the ship wa, he was riding was, was sunk, or he was shipwrecked somewhere in Negros. And I saw the details there, and many other things. News, old newspapers are there, see, Biblioteca Nacional. And there's a marker there that says, this was the old Agustinian Recollect Convent in Madrid. So the government, instead of running after the perpetrators, saw in the violent upheavals as expression of the public opinion and took advantage of them in order to accelerate the program of confiscating the properties of the church and religious orders. The crime, the simple crime, became a simple misfortune and the massacre of religious and secular clergy, just and providential chastisement. So in Spain at that time, there were 1,940 convents and 30,906 friars. So you can imagine all these convents except three were confiscated by the government and sold in public action because they needed the money to continue the war against the uh, against the group, the Carlist group of Carlos Maria Isidro de Bourbon. 
now came the great decree, great in the sense that it had affected so much, so many. The royal decree of despoliation and confiscation on July 25, 1835. All the religious congregations and orders were abolished, especially those with less than 12 professed members. And of these, authors should be clerics. And thereafter, all these monasteries should, whose number would be reduced were also abolished. The convent and churches and the landed estates were to be placed in auction, public auction, and the proceeds would be turned over for the government to support the war effort. Archives, books, artworks were adjudicated to the government, libraries, museums, academies, schools, or even private families. The despoliation or the plunder of church and monastic properties provided a source of wealth and additional financing for the external debt of the state. The state had owed much to, to the financial firms of the Rothschild. The proceeds and income from the public auction were allocated as well. You know, that was the alibi to the future Institute of Sciences and Arts, also to give to the poor churches after hearing the dictates of the bishops and generals of religious orders. Thus, the convent was shut down, arising from the decreed closure and from public disturbances that followed the promulgation of Prime Minister Juan Alvarez Mendizabal's confiscation decree of July 25, 1835. At that time, 900 convents were closed down. There were still remaining 1,000, but uh, across, uh, through the years, more decrees were issued by this good man, Juan Alvarez Mendizabal, and his anti-clerical clique. On March 8, 32 convents, March 8, 1835, 36, and the Recollects lost 32 convents, except for Montiagudo. The first decree says, all the monasteries, convents, seminaries, congregations, and other houses of religious, both men and women, including those with more than 12 profess. So it's not just less than 12 in July uh, 1835. Now, every convent was to be abolished. Religious habits were banned, exclustrated. Ang hirap naman, exclustrated. This is a term accepted in English huh? from the Spanish exclaustro, out of the cloister. Religious who were exclustrated were subjected to episcopal jurisdiction. They were kicked out of the orders and they had nowhere to go, so they go to the bishop. They were given measly pensions, like the amount given to secular priests. Artworks, books, and archives were deposited in parish churches and adjudicated to public museums sometimes, no? schools, academies, or libraries. Old convents and churches were raised to the ground, meaning abolished, demolished. Uh, study convents were converted into jails, military hospitals, or barracks, residences. Talagang galit na galit sila sa mga religious, no? Uh, ang alibay nila kasi maraming mga mahirap, so we have to give residence, to give refuge to these indigent people. O ginawang bodega. Lands were auctions. And their proceeds went to the state coffers. But who bought this, who purchased this lands of the religious? The rich people. That's why palpak daw yung 
uh, expropriation kasi they just changed owners. Uh, but as we have said earlier, uh, a while ago, that these convents were later sold to recollects. Next. Like that of Marsilia and that of San Milian de la Cogolia. Definitely, the recollects were afraid to be murdered. So, the first to escape was the Vicar General. <laughs> he escaped to a very unknown location near Portugal in Extremadura. She Father Tomas Escobar. And from there, unfortunately, he did not have much contact with the rest of the Recollect world. Anyway, there was no more world, Recollect world. The only existent Recollect world was in the Philippines. And he left behind the, the governance of the congregation to the Secretary General, Father Francisco Tello, and to the Procurator, Juan Villanueva de San Pablo, who in March 1835 also escaped Madrid. Everybody was running for their lives. And the confiscation of July 25, Mark that date, July 25, 1835, put an end to all contacts. Deem of public utility, recollect churches were saved, at least from demolition or public auction, but they were handed over to the bishops. The artworks, as we have said earlier, were deposited in the churches. And even some exclustrated friars were able to donate their properties to Monteagudo. Uh, gilded wood were sold in actions. Uh, how many convents were abolished? We have the next, ano? Uh, slide. Those are the convents exp expropriated or abolished. 32 convents. They had a seminary, yes, in Zaragoza for the province of Aragon. Not Aragorn, huh? Aragon. They had a seminary, yes, but the seminary was to train only friars for the for Spain. Montiagudo is not uh, listed there because it was saved by the decree of 1835. So 32 convents there, 16 on one side, 16 on the other, 32. All these convents were very old. Huh? They dated as far as 6th and the 17th century including Talavera. I think Talavera de la Reina is there. And the next will show the map, the location where these convents are located. So all the Recole convents were abolished. All the uh, Recole friars were expelled, exclustrated. And they had nowhere to go. Very sad. We'll describe the situation of the exclustration of the recollects. So imagine, no? 32 convents of the recollects. Yun lang, in the blink of an eye, demolished. Expropriated by the government. Sold in public action in order to support the war effort. So during the early months of, uh, next slide, uh, ex despoliation, the process was quick. The 338 Augustinian recollect priests and brothers were quickly and violently thrown out to the streets with no consideration to dignity, age, health, 
kahit bulag ka na, physical disability, all bereft of legal protection. In 1935, the bishops were mandated to give exclustrated recollects preferential treatment for the provision of curacies and other church positions. The novices were still mandated to undergo military training. The professed religious were banned from priestly ordination until 1844, but very rarely. So what were the, the positions of the ecclesiastic, uh, exclustrated, exclustrated priests? They were parish priests, rectors of churches, cemetery chaplains, Hindi naman siguro si Pulturero, ano? grabe, napaka-downgrading naman. Chaplains. Nursery chaplains. There were nannery, ah, nursery, nannery chaplains. There were nannery's that were saved because they were devoted to teaching. And grade school teachers. Chaplains, uh, canons, musicians, coadjutors, and treasurers of churches. The religious brothers who were kicked out from the monasteries because of the anti-clerical liberal decrees worked as farmers, organists, school porter, uh, estate administrators, hacienda administrators, staff in a law office and staff in a in a duke's office the duke of ihar the chronicles of the period spoke of the hardship of the exclustrated friars human miseries hunger abandonment mm. <laughs> Hostile at uh, dearth of savings, no income, no job, material poverty. Ah, material poverty. Dati yung vows lang nila ang poor sila. Ngayon talagang material poverty. Rejection by families, ex repudiation by society, and identity crisis. Some even turned to begging, nakikilimos and depended on people's charity. Next. Fortunately, Father Gabino Sanchez was appointed by the Holy See. No, from 1830s up to 1898, the Recollect Order, the existent Recollect Order, especially the one in the Philippines, was ruled by Commissary General. And this Commissary General was appointed by the Holy See, by the Pope. Fortunately, in 1862, Father Gabino Sanchez, I believe he was the third, third uh, Commissary General or the Vicar General, because assistance and contacts with uh, were more frequent. He compiled a list of illustrated recollects and took interest in their welfare. He was ready to help them, giving them much intentions. But he worked with prudence due to the hostile political amyans. Only 12 of the 388 recollects volunteered for the Philippine missions. These friars, however, were meticulously screened by the superiors in Montiagudo, not all friars, not all exclusive friars were accepted. No, automatically they had to be screened. Especially friars who had joined the Carlist cause, bawal yon. Anti-government sila. Now. What were the seminaries for missionaries in Asia? Next. The fourth provision of the July 25, 1835 decree allowed the Piaris, or called Escolapios. The Escolapios were the 
order of poor clerics regular of the Mother of God of the Pious Schools, or Escolapius, founded by Joseph Calasant and devoted to teaching and providing free education to poor children. So they were saved from suppression or abolition. And those three orders that had seminaries in Spain, or tawag na colegio, seminaries for us, for the provinces of Asia. The Spanish government was aware of the political importance of these um, missionaries in the Philippines, the praile, the most hated uh, of the propaganda movement, praile, kasi malakas daw ang praile. It knew that they, the friars, were valuable tools in assuring Spanish sovereignty. Spanish parliament totally agreed with the policy, and the seminaries for the formation of such missionaries were exempted from expropriation and abolition. One member of the parliament even said, the friars in Spain are parasitical plants. They were called manos muertas in English or French, smart men. But those assigned to missions in Asia were dedicated to agriculture and the arts. The officials of these territories, it was our green department in the parliament, did not ask for policemen or armies. They just wanted to defend the rich positions of the Philippines. So the seminaries in Valladolid, you have there a picture. Ah, ang tawag dito is ano, along Paseo de Filipinos, very old from the 16th century. And uh, Ocaña, Semina Santo Domingo de Guzman in Toledo, in Ocaña, Toledo. And our very own Monte Agudo, Nuestra Señora del Camino. In 1868, the decrees approved the, allowed the continued existence of the Piaris Fathers, Escolapius, and the Augustinian Convent in Valladolid, and the Dominican Convent in Ocania, and of course, uh, in the next page, next slide, and the Church and Convent of Nuestra Señora del Camino in Montiagudo, Navarra, founded in 1828 by the missionary province of St. Nicholas of Tolentino. So what you have there is Montiagudo. You know why, why convents have, have very large tracts of land? Because they were self, up to now self-sufficient. There were donados, meaning lay people who did not profess and work for them for food. And they, they, are, self, they are, up to now, they have been self-supporting. I remember the Filipino theologians or novices used to pray the rosary in the vineyard. And for every grape plot, that's one Hail Mary. So, especially the white grapes of Monteagudo and Marsilia. Here, this is a typical picture of friars in Monteagudo, this one. We have the Our Lady of the Way, Nuestra Señora del Camino, Virgen del Camino. And uh, this, this picture was taken 105 years after St. Ezequiel Moreno was novice here. And we have the, the faces of the Filipino novices and the future Saint Father Mariano Gaspio. Father, we have there Father Koha. <laughs> Father Koha. Balik ba? Father Koha, very handsome at that time, 1969. Huh? 1969. Father Escanillas, much more handsome. And of course, the other priest, Father Danny Tiong of the Diocese of Imus, Father Haboni from San Carlos, and the others who were exclustrated. 
si Simine, si Suaan, si Espartero, si cannot recognize them. So, Father Gaspio, there is the one, ano, yung white, white, white then. This is, this was 1969. 105 years, 104 years after St. Ezekiel was novice here, this group was there. This is a typical group of friars, ha? magbay mga opasyon, like a visiting general there. And of course, Father Francisco Javier Ochoa, the Bishop of Quetefu, was is there. So, uh, then in good thing that the recollects in the next slide, you will see the convent of Marsilia, that the Church of La Blanca set up in 1865, spread from this pollution decreases. It was there was a continuing series of dispoliation decrees. Because see, the war uh, against the Carlists extended way into the uh, 1868. Because Marsilia, on the left, was a theological seminary for missionaries of Asia. After Montiagudo, the novitiate, they went to Marsilia. In 1878, Based on those anti-clerical decrees, the convent of San Miguel de la Cogolia, La Rioa, was also spared. More missionaries were sent to Asia during the, uh, let's say, 60 years after this provision. There was no other convent in Spain but these three, San Miguel de la Cogolia, Marcilia, and Monteagudo. Later on, these missionaries branched out to the new missions in South America, Central America. By the way, uh, trivia, name trivia. Samilian de la Cogolia was the cradle of the Glossas Emilianenses. In 1900, the first manuscripts of the uh, developing language of Spanish were discovered in the libraries of San Miguel de la Cogolia. The one on your right. And in, in 1974, I think, they celebrated 1,000 1, years of the birth of the Spanish language there in San Miguel de la Cogolia formerly owned by uh, the contemplative order. Uh, Benedictines are, anyway, Marsilia was owned by the, uh, I, I'm not sure, Cavaldolis or the Cistercians, Cistercians. And so the Recollect order at that time bought these two convents exclustrated and expropriated convents from our, uh, from rich landowners. Now, what was the effect of the Karish, the exclustration and dispoliation decrees? By the way, two religious orders were erased from the face of the earth. The Order of Saint Jerome and the Order of Saint Basil abolished completely. And then the dispoliation could have also put an end to the recollects. From the viewpoint, the order survival was due to the Philippine missions. That's why the Philippines saved the Augustinian recollect from extinction. However, the other orders in Spain survived because they had religious communities in America, in Asia, in Africa, and in other European countries. Remember that the Jesuits, when they were abolished in 1740s, 
they had abolished in all the dominions of Spain, Portugal, France, and Italy. They had uh, communities in Poland, in Russia, and in Prussia, or uh, the present Germany and German states. So the Jesuits, after they were expelled from the Philippines, went to these European countries. However, what was strange that the recollect superiors did not have clear-sighted visions, while other recollect, while other religious orders established in America, new presence in America and other places of Europe, the recollect did nothing for sixty years. They could have sent more exclusive friars, of course, with prior screening to the Philippines. 388 jobless recollects, uh, not really jobless, they were also, they had some uh, uh, pension, but very paltry. There was also another chance to improve the plight of the recollects when. Antonio Canovas del Castillo in 1876 ruled Spain, the government at least, and there were restoration of recollect houses, restoration of many, many houses, not only Augustinians and only Dominicans. However, they were able to, to establish only the Convent of San Miguel de la Cogolia. Another strange thing, they did not like to send friars to, but they had to do it to America because the friars in the Philippines were products of the spirituality of the training in the Philippines. Too much isolationism, too much. Uh, love for personal money and the houses were set up by the recollects in the philippines but there was not much uh, community life except only in Mon in the convent of san nicolas the intramuros so The Philippines saved the recollects from extinction. Another curious fact in 1898, during the Philippine Revolution, uh, 300 recollects were kicked out from their parishes due to the revolution. Others left the parishes. Bohol, Negros, and other parishes. Not because they were hated by the people, but because the superiors in Manila were afraid that they would be victims like the massacre of the recollects in Cavite. But the people late after the revolution asked for more recollects, but they were few to give. Also in Palawan, very few because the rest had gone to South America, Central America. This is the second cause why the order spread throughout the world because the missionaries from the Philippines, especially Saint Ezequiel Moreno, who went to first to Spain, assigned in Marsilla, and then volunteered in 1888 to restore the province of La Candelaria, which also the province was also subjected to expropriation or what they call disamortization in 1861. And with that, I recall the sacrifices of the recollect friars in continuing the existence of the order in the Philippines and in Spain. Muchas gracias. And the next slide, next week, this is more interesting topic that you will listen. Thank you very much and good morning.